Hello and welcome back to Catlin Connections. Today, um, my guest is Jose Maria Maynat. Um, I uh, will present him as a, I wanted to present him as a musician, a singer, TV producer, um, more recently a writer and passionate a person passionate about uh, science. Yeah. But you prefer to be presented as a multitask person. Well, you you, you say it. No? You see all those exactly. things like I'm There's really a long a, list. No. Yes, I I like to do several things all the time all my life. Never never just doing just one thing. So. <clears throat> While I was in La Trinca, when it was a, a musical trio, mm -hmm. I was already studying informatics. Uh, I am a computer engineer, mm -hmm. and then uh, I was already playing music by myself with with computers. And then while I am doing television, I am writing books about science. You know, so wow, and, that's that's and a in lot. The meanwhile, I had five sons. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's also a task. And you also um, uh, started architecture. Yes, I, oh. I, did, I did it for for three years. Uh, I didn't finish architecture. Actually, uh, it was not my vocation to do architecture. But uh, from from very young, I, I had this mixture between what could be um, artistic no? and technical. No, right. so I, I thought that an architect could be something that could mix. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there is physics, there is. Uh, drawing, industrial, and also there is some creative because you have to do uh, nice houses, no? So yeah. that's what I thought. But then I started making music and I thought that it was really my vocation at that time. Mm -hmm. Vocation is an English word, vocation. A vocation? Vocation, yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> Actually, um, you speak uh, also eight languages. Yes. I read... No, not I, perfect, eh? I mean, mm -hmm. like, like English, you know, so I just to make myself understood mm -hmm. and, and understand what, what I'm saying. Mm. So I, you're I, very I speak, I speak very, well, in... very well Catalan and, and Spanish, of course, okay? <laughs> because they are my main languages, no? I, I, I learned French at school, at school because uh, at that time people were not learning English. Uh, the English is more <laughs> I also recent. started with French, actually. Yeah. Mm. Uh, at that time, the, 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 the next language that the, the boys well, study was in uh, French, right. so I, I speak very fluent French. Now I'm not practicing it very, very much, but I can speak in French. Mm -hmm. I learned English in the 60s. I started learning English with the Beatles songs. At the time, I had I have a group with Tony and my partners. We had a group, mm -hmm. and we play all the English, uh, all the Beatles uh, songs, all of them. And right. I can even uh, tell to you the words from <laughs> beginning to end of most of the songs. Mm -hmm. And um, I start to understand the words, and, and I started learning English then, mm -hmm. more seriously. But I never learned English uh, academically. Eh? It was always self... Self-taught, self right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I, I studied uh, German, I studied Dutch, and I can speak very well Italian. When I'm in, in, when I'm in Italy, I practice a little bit, and then in one week I speak perfect it Italian. Comes because out it's not so right? different from Catalan, Spanish, and French, with a mixture of all right. this. And I can understand Portuguese, but I don't. I don't follow mm -hmm. more, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's what happens. Now, when you speak um, a Romance language like yes. Catalan, Spanish, and then you learn French, it's very easy to to learn Italian and Portuguese. No? Yeah, that's it. That's it's it. what happens to me. I as suggest well. to everybody to learn at least four languages. Mm -hmm. I think that is the minimum, so that the brain really is open mm -hmm. then to the rest of the. Why four? Three. Why four languages? Well. In my case, I say four because two are um, uh, the Catalonia is a bilingual. So mm. these first two were not there was not any effort for me. My, my family speak Catalan, and I learned Catalan in two years old. <laughs> and then when the first time I went to school, they spoke, they speak something I didn't understand. <laughs> what are they saying? I say, oh, no, no, you will learn. And I can't remember how, but of course I learned Spanish. So these two were not easy. But to study two languages, I mean. When I say four, I mean two languages, mm -hmm. okay? Right. Your language and two more, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th very... I think that's the minimum to, to open the, 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 the brain to, to learn, mm -hmm. to be multilingual, which I think is very good for the brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it makes it work and it, it kind of expands, no? And yeah, you yeah, learn yeah. things faster. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And it makes you proud to, to understand the people everywhere. <laughs> it's it's yeah. good. Yeah, that's a good thing, to be able to communicate yourself. Yeah, when I see right? the president of the Spanish government who cannot speak a word of English and say, it's very difficult, mucho todo esto es, mucho... Please, how can someone hmm. today don't 
Yeah. Learn. Yeah. Well, actually, I think the ability, the facility to learn a foreign yeah. language is a very important thing that we have. I have this facility. I, th I think it's a gift. And you have it or you don't have it. And I, I guess I met people who, uh, for whom it's more difficult to learn a foreign language. You have language. to do it young. Hmm. As younger you do, better, as the better, no? Yeah. My, this is what my, they say. My girl is five years old now. My wife is German. And she spoke to her a little bit in German, but then not so much because she didn't. But when this girl goes with her grandpa, grandfather and grandmother in a couple of weeks where they speak German, he, she comes back speaking <laughs> a little yeah, yeah, German. Yeah. Because exactly. The, 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 those, people, those, those small people of three, four, five years old <laughs> are like a sponge. Are they? Yeah, it's true. It's, um, I'm from another country as well, and it happens to me the same with my daughters when you go to Romania, although they, they hear they don't practice very much, but if they spend two weeks there, it's just, they open up, right? And you see well, two small children who speak different language playing together, and yeah. they find a way. Exactly. They find a way to understand each other. <laughs> it's really... Um, well, this is an interesting uh, topic. Um, how uh, learning foreign languages helps you to uh, to make your brain work more and, yeah, and yeah. become There's more receptive. There's a lot of studies eh, saying that people bilingual or trilingual really yes. has, has, has some abilities mm -hmm. uh, better than other people who only speak one language. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, you're very interested in these matters. You're Actually, like you said before, you have a, a huge interest in science, yeah, and no. you've recently published uh, a book called um, uh, "Ciencia Optimista: Optimistic uh, Science," which, um, which is uh, well, I must confess, I haven't read it, but I read about it, and uh, it's. I think it's a great thing that you did in making science like more accessible well, to, to people I, I make, and making. I, make it easier to understand through examples and experiments and... Uh, the idea of the book uh, was based in a, in a radio program I did for three years mm -hmm. where the... the you don't do it anymore? No, no, yeah. I, I'm not, not, not this, I do other things, but not this one, okay? Oh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I was, uh, the, the man who conducted it, which is called Basté, he told me that he wanted me to cooperate with him as a tertuliano, I don't know. <laughs> Which is the English word for well, as a, as a, yeah, as a people who talk with yeah. about everything, no? Uh, to collaborate, is, yeah, to collaborate. Yeah, to with someone who, does, who doesn't understand anything but can talk about something. <laughs> this morning has been a storm. He understands about storms. He has been mm. a terrorist attack mm -hmm. in Syria. He knows about political. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I say I told him that I'm not. I didn't like this kind of mm -hmm. uh, the kind of work, and I told him, can you do something about science but entertaining? And he says, well, in my show, you want to do science? Well, let's try it. And then he says, let me think about it. And 10 minutes later, he called me, I've already thought. Mm -hmm. we, we, we begin. And Important. then what we try is, they say, he say always, you explain it to me. If I understand it, then my people will understand it. Mm -hmm. So do it the way that I, that I understand it. And that's what I did. And we did talk about everything, anything, eh? about in, um, artificial intelligence, about even quantum physics, about whatever, asteroids, uh, space, uh, biology, genetics, whatever. Eh? Whatever yeah. thing that yeah. covers uh, stem cells or whatever, okay? And then uh, the... But that was a success, I mean, the, the radio program. And then I just prepared it in the form of the book, okay? And the book, there are 13 episodes, uh, not very long, about 20, 30 pages every one, with some draws and some graphics, very nice to read. Mm -hmm. And it's what I try, that, that to be very serious, and at the same time, very entertaining. So serious in the content, that is not a lie, Everything is well explained. Of course. Everything is complete and, and uh, there is nothing, well, mm -hmm. of course, there's a lot of things left. But I mean, uh, after reading the book, if you heard about, I don't know, a black hole, you won't put a face that <laughs> you will know a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Enough to, 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 to know what that they are talking about. And where does your interest in, in science uh, come from? Strange. You've always been interested in it? Always, yes. When, even mm -hmm. when I was a child, I mean, my. My, my, my uh, mathematics, physics, and uh, chemistry, and that was my, 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 uh, mm -hmm. my like subjects, favorite my subjects. subjects. Yeah, my preferred subjects in school mm -hmm. were always the scientific subjects, always, always. Mm -hmm. and, so, and also technology. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested all, the t all my life in technology. I had one of the first computers. <laughs> 
Well, all my friends, I was the first one who had a computer in the IT. Yeah, okay. I read that, that you uh, studied um, programming, IT yeah. programming, and you, you, you brought uh, some modern, like, new kind of computer here, yeah, and you yeah. were the only one who knew how to use it? Yes, it was a computer co uh, to make music. The first musical computer, which was called the Fairlight CMI, it was an Australian computer, and suddenly it became very famous because all the, all the artists from the 80s, you know, Stevie Wonder, mm. Phil Collins, well, all these artists start to using, really, uh, the fur light. And then the, the, the musicians in Spain, they would like to use, it was a very special sound at that, at that time, okay? It was very new. And they said, right. who, who has it? They say, one man who is singing La Trinca. La Trinca <laughs> was a comic group, and say, this one has <laughs> a fur light? Uh, mm. Yes, I have a fur light. And then they, they invite me to participate, and I, I, have, particip I have participated in in some of the recordings of the m best uh, groups of the 80s in Spain, the Me Mecano, uh, well, of all those groups, I was there programming a computer, which was something very new at the time, to program a computer to make sounds, you know? Mm -hmm. That's amazing, no? I mean, it's not easy to find a person who knows about music, who can sing, who can... Uh... Uh, write jokes or tell jokes. Yeah, well, dance. not jokes exactly, but well, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Satirical like songs, really. Humor, more than right? Jokes, yeah. Humorous songs, yeah, yeah, they yeah, were, yeah. right? What you did uh, with La Trinca. And also do computer programming and, and do um, a lot of things in TV. And now write a book about science. Well, I think this book is especially um, attractive. Look, look, here we are singing songs at the time. Oh, this is very from... young, very young, very young. This is from the 70s. Right. This is not me. Eh? <laughs> this is me. The one who is there with the glasses. I had glasses all my life until I. Yes, exactly. You're not yeah. wearing uh, glasses. I had an operation. Oh, right. Is it better now with the glasses? Of course. <laughs> so, um, what song was this? This song, this song is a song that we did at the, the, our first, 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 first song, which was based actually in an English song, which was called Lily the Pink. I don't know if you know it, okay? Hmm? It was an English song. We'll drink, we'll drink, we'll drink to Lily the Pink. <laughs> it was a popular song. <laughs> and then we, we, we translated it to Catalan and we thank it. Hmm. At the beginning, it's what we did. Eh? We used popular folk songs, popular songs, funny songs. Hmm tavern songs, okay, drinking right. songs, okay. and, and, and we start to translate it to Catalan and make some funny music mm -hmm. out of it. This is me. <laughs> oh. Right. You look like one of the Beatles. Yeah, it's John Lennon, yeah. Right? That was the idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you succeeded. And then your songs became more... Um, more political. Uh, exactly, more social yeah. and more yeah, political. Uh, right? At that time, we, were, we, we live in Canet Mar, which was our town. There was in Canet not a lot of political atmosphere, okay? But when we came to live in Barcelona, we find a lot of groups were fighting against the, the dictatorship of Franco's and all the, mm -hmm. and all the time. It was a very political time. So we start to do, depending on the censorship, because there was something we had to fight all the time, but to have songs that really are more satirically political. I know um, there was um, a particular uh, event when one is you organized. I read that you organized a festival, like it was yes. like, which was like the Catalan Woodstock, and then you had some problems with the. A lot, a lot of problems. Yes. Right. We, did, we did the, we did a festival that was, that was the first festival in, in Spain mm -hmm. that really has, like you say, like Woodstock or, or wine that has 50,000 people all together, uh, hours and hours listening to music. Okay, mm -hmm. and that was too much for the Franco <laughs> regime. And right. we had a lot of problems with them, and also because people use these kind of festivals to, 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 to explain what they really wanted, and they say freedom, democracy, all of this, and at the time, freedom and democracy were really two forbidden words. Right. <laughs> and and this is why we had some, some problems, yes, with <laughs> the policy, with the police. And then uh, you decide after, like, um, for how long um, did you do uh, La Trinca? This, this, this band, like for uh, 20 I'm all the time years, more like 20, uh, 20 years period. I was 20 years studying, 20 years with La Trinca. Then I did 20 years t as a television producer. I don't know if you have said it. Yeah, yeah. Thousands and thousands and thousands of television shows. It's not, when not, you, not, it's not when with you us in the front. We start 
doing television shows with us as an artist, right? mm. but but then we, we go behind the camera and we, we did a lot of very successful shows like uh, with just mu music. Now, when you um, when you stopped with La Trinca, let's say you, you created this this production uh, yes, company called years Just ago. Music, Just yes. Music, uh, which was very successful because you uh, produced hugely, immensely popular programs such as Chronicles Marianas Operation and Triunfo, Operation Triunfo. Was one, the, one, the, one the biggest. The, for 54 countries has been produced this show that mm. we created, so it's mm. really a huge, huge Yeah, it success. was a huge hit and something very new. I remember the, the time, first the edition, was really it was immensely, immensely popular. The time, and it was something very mm. to what happens in America when they did American Idol, mm. uh, but we did it before, I must say. <laughs> Mm. Two years ago, before American Idol, there was already Operation Triumph on air. But this is kind of show where, for the first time, people can really vote and follow new people. Talent shows has always been there, but mm, in, in the 2000, maybe after Big Brother, eh? which is not a very popular show. I mean, popular as a, yes, it's very popular, but I mean, not very well considered. Considered, okay, but right. it makes a change. The change that people really take decisions about who, who stays, who goes, that you're watching them all the time, really, uh, in, the, in the case of Big Brother, doing nothing, okay? <laughs> in our case, studying and learning and rehearsing. So people were following those artists in the Operation Triumph, those mm -hmm. wannabe artists, okay? Uh, all the time, 24 hours, and so they, they really loved them. They was like kind of family, and it, it grow, it grow, and it really, it was a huge, huge success. Yeah, I remember the first, the first edition, uh, everybody was like everybody hooked was, on it, and yeah. it was, you, nobody missed. Spain, and, Spain, and, yeah. Spain became crazy about Yeah, 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 this, it was a before and after, I would say, in, in yeah, television. Yeah. I remember and, that, those times. And also in records, record industry, they, they, those boys and girls, absolutely unknown, in one year they sold literally millions of records of mm -hmm. was Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and some of them are still very popular today. Yes, uh, some of them are still popular, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, you're also the, the person who imported um, reality shows yeah. in Spain, like uh, Big Brother, mm -hmm. right? So you've always had this vision, this vision no? uh, for, for successful TV. TV shows. Well, Big Brother was, was was written by a man who's called John Demol, mm -hmm. which and the Mall, I was my company, and the Mall is Ender, which was one yeah. man and Mall mm -hmm. with John Demol. Right, right. And right. the first time that John Demol told to us, I'm thinking about the show where we will close some people in the house for months. He wanted to do it, do it for one year at the beginning, eh? <laughs> <laughs> with cameras, uh, wet cams all the time, year. and see what happens. And mm -hmm. some of the meetings say, you're crazy. Then. People doing nothing. Nobody mm. will will watch it. Okay. Mm. Then he reduce it a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. three months, etc. But of course, people could watch it because yeah, we are voyeur, voyeur. Yeah, yeah, to, we have to this. Look, to look for we a all have this voyeur part in yeah. us. And then you, um, when you decided to um, to um, to leave uh, your production company. Right. Um, then you created um, with Tony Cruz, your yes, partner. Yes, my partner all my life. Tony Cruz is my partner, my friend from when I was ten years old. So it's all my life. Mm -hmm. Well, That's actually, uh, now we have a production company, but it's not. We call it production company, but we're not producing. Actually, we're right. creating. It's a I was going company. to talk about Reset TV, right? So yeah, Reset TV. We are mm. more a creating hub, so where we really create programs, explain the programs to the channels, sell them, and. But then let someone else produce it because when we were at just at the mall, which is some, that sometimes there were more than thousand people, depending on <laughs> it was an industry. You know? Yeah, of course. And hmm. I had too much. Twenty years, no? I told you, it's more than <laughs> enough. Uh, and and then now we're six people, mm -hmm. creative. <laughs> mm -hmm. We create formats. We put them in a promo tape then, and then we, we sold it all over the world. And it's mm -hmm. I like this job now. It's yeah. for, for, for this. Part of my life, I prefer that. Which, because, like you said, it's more creative. Yes. You can imagine, and, and you can. And, and there is no stress. Mm -hmm. And you can actually. Uh, you said you want to invent new formats. Yes, that's right. Correct, Create right. new formats. Yeah. When, when you say new formats in television, what what exactly? Uh, well, format is a program actually, mm -hmm. but the format is like a program new, that can right? be re can be reproduced. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, format is a, a bible. They call it bible when you say the show is about this. 
uh, at the beginning happens this and then this and this and then uh, in the following week uh, happens this but then this you know and at the end this is uh, there is a prize or whatever you know and all what is the format about there is an idea that if you cannot explain the format in in 20 seconds, it's a bad format. It doesn't format. work. <laughs> no, it's a bad it's format, okay? Okay. So what is... It's not uh, worth it. Who wants to be a millionaire? Well, there will be people in front of a computer, and there is a question with four possibilities, and mm -hmm. <laughs> they must, must answer the right one. Okay, this is a format, okay? okay. And then the format it must be developed, okay? Then if they call to the to the house, to the public, etc., but, but the format is, is an explanation of what's the show all about. Okay. Something that can be bought, Mm -hmm. Because there is there is something new there, okay, mm -hmm. and can be reproduced all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, can you mention any projects you are working uh, on at the moment, or you can't? Uh, no, uh, no, talk no. About we're working them. now. We're working now in a in a show about uh, soccer, uh, where we the idea is to follow a team of players, a real mm -hmm. team, eh? right? Not not in the first league, but mm -hmm. team. Okay. Maybe second or. Third, mm -hmm. but the team who is really competing, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of lives there. There are the lives of the players, of the wives or girlfriends, of the family, of the, of the coach and of the everybody, no? Mm -hmm. And to follow those lives during a whole season, right? And make a show about this, mm -hmm. and, and like also reality, kind yes, of reality, reality show. But then right? let the people with a, an internet uh, application or a mobile application. Take some decisions, mm -hmm. like those games ca that are that you can kind of manager, okay? Uh, virtual manager. In cases, is real. So if, you, if people decide that this player should play and this one not, it, it affects the decisions of the coach, okay? So right, that's the, interesting. Uh, well, this is what we are doing now, and we possibly produce it in Mexico. Right, because the um, Reset TV operates uh, from Barcelona, but you also yes. operate in London, I read, in Miami, well, in yeah. the United L London, States. London, we've closed London because uh, uh, we start in London, but now uh, Warner, Warner International is uh, representing us there in, the, okay. in the Europe. So, but we have an office in, in Barcelona and Miami now. Okay. Miami because we work a lot by, with the Latin market, mm -hmm. even the, the, the American Latin market. So I mean. Uh, for the Telemundo, Univision, which are Spanish-speaking channels, but in the United States. Hmm? Hmm. Okay. Um, when um, when I read about you, I um, I noticed that there are quite a lot of people who consider that you are one of the um, uh, one of the people uh, here who knows more about television. Well, yeah, I know a lot. <laughs> and you have a lot I of know experience. Something. I know something. <laughs> you know something. Right. After doing <laughs> thousands and thousands of hours, mm -hmm. uh, you, you learn something. Uh, how do you see the situation of um, audiovisual uh, right now here? And, uh, in Spain or in general? <laughs> because no, here, at local level. Oh, Catalonia. Mm -hmm. Catalonia. Uh, Catalonia, well, let's well, talk the, about the, Catalonia. I, I will better. talk in general hmm. first. And then <laughs> in general, uh, Television, uh, the way we see television in the past is changing, is changing dr drastically and quickly. So uh, this idea that the channels decide which show they put at nine o'clock, and you have to sit in your coach and watch this at the time that they have decided, this is this is already in the it's past. Already. I mean, hmm. um, um, everybody who is under thirty is not watching television. Never this way, they watch television. But they watch it maybe on television, most of the time on the computer, on the web, mm -hmm. on, the, on the tablet, and, and when they really want. When they want. Exactly. Okay? Not, not when the channel decides. And actually, uh, these, these platforms like Netflix, etc., they put that streaming and you see it when you want. Okay? So, this idea that um, you have to watch television because now it's 9 o'clock and it's time of. It will be, it will be of course, for the. For the for the events, no, for the football match or whatever, mm. that has to be live, okay? But the rest of it, mm, I think that in, that in 10 years, television, as we know, will almost disappear. I don't know what they will do, but but uh, less and less and less people. If you see the, the the number of people who are watching TV, it's less and less and less and less and less, and it's not finishing. It's this, <coughs> and, I, and I think that there's even a little bit exponentially, you know, because mm. it's going really quick. So, uh, whatever we think, talk now about television, uh, we have to think about content. 
which is not exactly television as we, in, as we knew in the past, which is a channel and a, and exactly. a screen, okay? It's content. Mm -hmm. that is consumed, <laughs> whatever, whenever, <laughs> and at your pace, okay? And of course, the, the people like me, which, which are doing content, <laughs> mm -hmm. we don't care if they show it <laughs> on Netflix, on TV, on computer, on, mm -hmm. on tablet or on channel. So I think that the future is to make content available to the people. And on, on, this is, and then, and then about the, what still is left of the television, as we understand, in Catalonia. Well, Catalonia has a very strong uh, Catalan channel, which is TV3, etc. But it's also um, going down in number of viewers. And in Spain, finally, there were six channels. Now they are a lot of channels, but actually they are two media groups. And it's a, it's a monopoly, well, a, a duopoly. Mm. This is not good for the situation because then there is no concurrence, there is, no, there is too much power in those groups. And actually, in Spain, we talk with everybody who is producing, and all of them are a little bit desperate, a little bit stressed, a little bit... Right. Yes, so I don't think there is a good moment for the television. Mm -hmm. Well, at yeah, least I, I hope they, they will watch us because this is the only program in English uh, produced here in, in Catalonia. So. <laughs> um, it, as a person who knows a lot about uh, television, Jose Maria, do you watch uh, TV a lot, or I, 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 what I, I, do I you don't watch? watch TV a lot, I must say. Yeah? It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of paradox, but I, I don't watch TV a lot. At least I don't watch the TV we were talking. Okay? Like the conventional, you know, the yeah. conventional, conventional way, TV right? I watch, I watch professionally. I watch some shows because I need to watch them, okay, and right. see what mm -hmm. are them about. But then I don't follow them. Mainly mm, at home. I watch is serious. I'm serious? a fan yeah. of the of the series. Which ones do you watch, or all, which all ones of, do you like? All of them. I uh, know. I was like, I watch a lot of them. Actually, uh, uh, my do you uh, remember which was the first TV series you watched uh, that you liked a lot? For example, in my case, it Breaking was Bad. Game of Thrones. Breaking mm -hmm. Bad. Right. Before That's a Game good of one. Thrones. Eh? Mm -hmm. Breaking Bad. I was really. I, I didn't watch the first episode. I started when the show was were already one year there, and someone gave me uh, the, the DVD of the first, of the first three uh, series, mm -hmm. and then I started to watch from number one, and yeah. then I couldn't stop. And exactly, <laughs> this is the problem, because you get like hooked on it, and then you need a lot yeah. of time, right? Yeah. And, and I like uh, House of Cards, The Game of Thrones, uh, of course, the, the Breaking Bad, which is finished, it's a pity. Yeah. Nowadays <laughs> and, they and, make and I'm looking, really I'm watching now. Ones. I'm watching now a lot of shows, I'm watching um, the Better Call Saul, more than 20 I'm watching at the same time. Every week I watch some 20 episodes. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was watching now this week American Crime, I was watching... Mm -hmm. My wife likes it very much, I'm not so much the Walking Dead. I, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Walking Dead, but I, right. I can watch it, okay? It's also a very good exercise for English, because I suppose you yes. watch them and, in and the original And we watch them version. in English with English subtitles. Mm -hmm. to help understand, because sometimes, yeah. if, if without English subtitles, if they speak very clear English, yes, but sometimes in those series, they speak well with, with, uh, with accents. It or depends with, on the accent. Perhaps. Yes, and sometimes, uh, to be sure that we understand everything, we have English subtitles, mm -hmm. which is something that I suggest to the audience to, to do. Because even you don't exactly. understand everything what is written, mm -hmm. you start to learn new words, new ways, new, mm -hmm. new ways saying things. I it's think a that is a good, good exercise. exercise to really, not, not just watching television in English, but having it written, if you don't speak perfect English, I mean, okay, mm -hmm. uh, not, not for you, but people well, I don't who, speak perfect English well, either. But, <laughs> I, but, but uh, if you cannot understand uh, more than 60 or 70 percent, mm -hmm. which is my case, I understand mm -hmm. 60, 70 percent without right. subtitles, okay? With subtitles you understand 100 percent, and it's a pleasure because you learn new New word, new and it's also very rewarding, no? You feel like uh, compensated for, for, for the time and it's like a reward that, that you learn something and you can understand it and so on. Anyway, uh, I agree with you that it's a really good exercise. And, um, well, uh, you talked about the future, you talked about the future of uh, television and audiovisual and uh, in your book, actually, um, um, Ciencia Optimista, you talk a lot about, um, about these things, how, how uh, technological advances will uh, affect us in the future and your opinion is that it, science will make our lives easier, right? Better, yeah. Mm. 
Well, actually, the book is about the future. It's about how technology and science and will really make a future that we're not really even imagine how fast and how big it would be. Exactly. Because the things that they said, we'll see them in 20 years, are happening now, no? Yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. That's, is that's, like it, that's it. Everybody that someone f makes a provision that seems logical, it's shorter and shorter and shorter. When I was in that program, radio program, I told you, something like four years ago, I talked for the first time about um, driverless, driverless cars, okay? Cars who, who, who drive themselves, okay? Autonomous cars. And, uh, and I say, I'm sure that by 2000, 25, that will be here. And everybody says, ah, you're too optimistic. A car who drives itself in, 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 in 10 years, it's impossible. To mm -hmm. They are already... They are yeah. already uh, doing tests, They're no? Doing with, tests. With no, no, with no. Them. Actually, mm. what is left behind is the laws and things like this, but, but the mm -hmm. cars are already there. And I think that it, much before 2025, in 2020, Maybe there will be in a few years. There will be there, and mm -hmm. we'll so I mean, things go faster than expected all the time with the artificial intelligence. The same. Mm -hmm. When we talk about uh, about phones, for instance, uh, everybody thinks that they are here with us for a long time, and they're not here with us for a long time. Actually, the first iPhone is less than ten years old. Right. And ten years, which is nothing in the, st in the history mm -hmm. of humanity, mm -hmm. and you have a phone almost in every pocket all over the world, in South Africa, in China, right. and all, so, so everybody, is something that in 10 years, the, the, be, mm, 10 years is now, but five years ago, there were already, so what everybody has a phone. We'll so, use something else which will be smaller and more sophisticated and, and used for many other things. No? Yes, no, but what I mean is that the, 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 the humanity adapts very quick to, to, to technology. technology, the technology yeah. is really good for them, it's helping them. Uh, I agree that it will help us. Tablet is five yeah. years old, six years old, and everybody has a tablet. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really something that, and then it will happen the same with the cars, driverless, that the bombing, people will say, whoa, 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 and then it will go. Uh, yeah. Artificial intelligence, when the computers Robots, will talk to yeah. us and we talk to the computers, that will happen in everyday jobs and life, like a, like a personal assistant, yeah. but, but talking to us, which is what makes this field, like, have you seen the movie Hair? Or Hair? No? Well, Her, is well, it a recent one or a, a movie called Her? Okay, mm -hmm. where there was a computer with a voice, a very nice voice, eh, I must say. It was Scarlett Johansson voice, so I mean, right, right. It's good, and a man who really uh, finally okay. fell in love. Right. He didn't have a form, eh? Right. It was just an operating system. Okay. Oh. But. Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll try to watch it. Yes, I Anyway, I, you talk about these things and many other interesting um, issues in your book. You talk about stem cells, you talk about driving, about robots, artificial intelligence and all that. And um, <clears throat> it's, it's really um, extremely, extremely um, interesting to, to talk about what will happen in the future, how it will affect us. Uh, but um, they tell me we are, we've run out of time and we need to conclude here. Maybe you can come another time to talk <laughs> about, about no the problem. future. It will be really interesting. We'll Maria. have a brilliant future. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope so. Um, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Right, congratulations for the book and, and good luck with all your projects. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.